What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Grace Curly Show, which I'm not ready for, by the way. Uh, hold on. I got to get some lights over here. All right. That's a better light. And we're going to... About four minutes till we get on the Grace Curly show. So I'm going to connect us up with them and hope everybody's doing well and had a great weekend. I sure did. So. We're filling it for Grace. We'll be right back after this. And we have a special guest host today. Yes, it is. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Everything good? On my good. I will put you through. Um, yeah, it sounds, it sounds good. I'll put you through now. It okay. definitely is effective on my husband's allergies. All right. So there we go. Um, we have a guest host sitting in for Grace and... Why it's not me? I don't know. <laughs> no, actually, uh, it's been a very busy day. So I'm glad I'm here. Aaron Chadbourne is the guest host. So I'll have to remember that. But um, good to see everybody. Thank you for commenting. And, uh, and uh, thank you for listening each and every week. Uh, Anthony and Patrick and Billy, good to see you guys. Uh, dealer packed a few weeks ago. Awesome. Let's talk, Anthony. Uh, let's do it. We got to figure out how to get that done. If you're not ready, I'm quite sure it will still be a good episode. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Patrick. You're always so kind to the balding old guy here behind the microphone. Um, so we went to Colorado last week. We saw what the Democrats have, in, have planned in Colorado for their, for their Subjects, because obviously they think of them as subjects instead of constituents. Uh, there's a quick little article here on bearing arms by Cam Edwards about Democrat Democrats. Excuse me, Colorado Democrats set to consider multiple gun control bills this week. Um, let me share that screen with you, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, even though Colorado lawmakers are expected to spend the bulk of their time this week on budget issues, the Democrat-controlled House could still consider a bill banning so-called assault weapons. Um, the assault weapons is a big, big bucket in Colorado. Um, so, yeah, just I would say that assault weapons is the understatement of the year. You are fake news. Um, they have really <laughs> bit off a giant, giant swath of guns. It doesn't just include semi-automatic rifles. It does include all semi-automatic rifles, just about. And it also, uh, I know that. Um, it also includes any pistol with a threaded barrel which is crazy because they allow suppressor ownership there. Suppressors are legal for ownership. So, But all of a sudden, if it has a threaded muzzle, it falls into assault weapon. All right. The gun ban has already cleared the House Judiciary Committee on the day that I was there on a party line vote, albeit with some minor changes. Guess what the minor change was? It went from a $250,000 fine for a first offense to $500,000 for a first offense for anyone who dares defy the, the government 
Uh, the gun ban. Oh, we're coming back. Talk more about that later. This is the Grace Curley Show. We're back on the Grace Curley Show. I'm Aaron Chadbourne sitting in for Grace, staying on top of all of today's stories, including President Donald Trump and his news yesterday that um, he's only going to have to put up a bond of $175 million, which he says she will do in all cash. I did like the caller that he's actually bringing dollar bills. I mean, make it rain for Letitia James. Um, but we want to know, he, he did start out his press conference yesterday throwing shade at, at, uh, at Joe Biden and his thug. Like this is all about election interference. This is all Biden run things, meaning Biden and his thugs, because I don't know if he knows he's alive. And it's a shame. It's a shame what's happening to our country. This is election interference. I think he called him Biden. And basically he, you know, Trump never wanted to, to, to turn the other cheek. Um, so we'll, that's what we asked about in today's poll question, which you can take at gracecurlyshow.com. Today's poll question, of course, is brought to you by the Nasa Beach Inn. Book your spring stay at Nasa Beach Inn with April rates starting at two forty nine ninety nine. Really a good rate. You can reserve your pet-friendly ocean view room for the fireplace. Go to nasabeachinn.com. That's nasabeachinn.com. All right, Jared, what is today's poll question, and what are our answers thus far? The poll question is, do you agree with Trump that Biden and his thugs are behind the prosecutions as a form of election interference. Yes, it's a coordinated conspiracy. Yes, but only because the judicial system has been overtaken by progressives with Trump derangement syndrome. Or no, it's on the up and up. I mean, I think number two is true also. But I'm going to say yes, it's, it's actually concerned. They're having meetings in the White House. <laughs> yeah, 77% of the audience say it's a coordinated conspiracy. 22% say it's because of Trump's arrangement syndrome, and 1% still think it's on the up. Do you think someone just fell asleep on their keyboard? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was 3% to start the show, so it's more people have filled out, more people have, have, have seen it figured out. Speaking of people that help us figure things, Toby Leary joins us each week at this time for 2A Tuesday. Toby Leary, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for filling in for Grace, and thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. You know, I get nervous every time I come into Massachusetts and talk about guns because you all have some crazy laws down here, and they're always trying to make them worse. What can you tell us about the status of that terrible bill in the Massachusetts legislature? It is a terrible bill, as you say, Aaron. It's, um, it is in conference committee right now, and uh, the, the big thing is it's in the hands of six different committee members, so three senators, three uh members of the house and it's no surprise which ones are on the democrat side the two senators and the two uh representatives that are on the democrat side are cynthia cream and joan lovely on the senate side and uh michael day and carlos gonzalez all four of them combined are <laughs> horrific for the gun movement uh the 2a movement they uh cindy cream is an annual uh, offender of introducing unconstitutional gun control legislation every single session. And uh, so she's getting her dream come true with this bill that they're now debating. It's uh, House Bill H4139. And um, the two representatives from the Republican Party are on the Senate side, Bruce Tarr, who's the House Minority Leader, and the uh, Joseph McKenna, on the House side. Now, Bruce Tarr actually went along and voted for the bill after blowing a lot of smoke um, all morning before they took the vote about how it was unconstitutional. It wasn't ready for a vote. They never had its hearing. And so one concession that has come out of the conference committee is that they are doing it in a public way. Like normally they go behind closed doors and they hash out all the details of this. Um, but, you know, one thing I, I will say is probably because they didn't have any type of hearings on the Senate side, um, they are allowing the public to view the debate over what infringements and unconstitutional laws will ultimately be the law of the land here in Massachusetts. So 
Um, it's kind of hard to speculate where this is all going to go. The Senate version was a lot different than the House version. Um, I hope that they just can't reconcile the bill and they run out of time. That would be the best case scenario for the uh, people who live behind the lines in Massachusetts because it wouldn't pass. So that's what I'm hoping happens, um, although I'm, I'm not too confident that will happen because both sides hate guns more than they hate each other. In other words, the House and the Senate they they hate each other, but they hate each other less than they hate guns. So they'll probably figure out a way to make something stick. And um, they, they hate each other less than they like wielding power and taking taking rights away from people. Right. Oh, exactly. Yeah. No. No doubt about it. And you know, Aaron, I was in um, Colorado last week on Tuesday uh, for the um, Colorado has a very similar bill to what is passing, what passed here in Massachusetts. And one thing that has come into sharp focus and become abundantly clear, I speculated that the mass uh, house, you know, um, Michael Day's office did not actually write this bill. I speculated that it was a group like Moms Demand Action or Giffords because he posed in his office with Giffords and his arm around her. And I'm sure she was dropping off a big fat campaign check for the reelection uh, of Michael Day and whatnot. So um, I always speculated that it was an anti-gun group that wrote this bill because of the language that um, you see in other states and whatnot. It, it certainly wasn't just Massachusetts uh, politicians trying to figure out how to make it better for Massachusetts residents. And this became abundantly clear last week when I was in Colorado um, and the two sponsors of the Colorado bill actually came out and said that, yeah, we consulted with the anti-gun group agencies like Giffords and Brady and and um, all of the different anti-gun groups out there to come up with this bill. So they actually said the quiet part out loud. And the bill is almost identical to Massachusetts bill other than it actually takes it a couple steps further, believe it or not. Um, so. Yeah, they're very active in state legislatures, and we see this happening all throughout the country. It is absolutely uh, maddening that politicians who were tasked with being the gatekeepers of our rights, according to the author of the Constitution, James Madison, have now become the right taker uh, and think that they're the ones that grant the rights in the first place. So. It, they it, can't help themselves, Toby. Yeah. And I want to ask you more about your trip to Colorado when we come back. Plus, we want to take questions for Toby. If you have questions about guns, Second Amendment, 844-500-4242. You're listening to 2A Tuesday on the Grace Curley Show. Recently, we received... All right. So there it is. My little monologue. And uh, so glad to do it, G-Webs. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, the people are furious, by the way. The, this isn't the people's fault. This is a avowed communist, a card-carrying communist, and a... Sorry, I'm going to get Instagram going. And a transplant from San Francisco. Those are the two sponsors of the bill. And they they both... Oh, and the beauty of the one guy who is the sponsor of the bill, who um, is the communist, is the, the fact that he's not even elected. He's appointed. And the other one is from San Francisco. So she's trying to make... Colorado, San Francisco. Um, so it, it's absolutely mind boggling. Um, the Rocky Mountain Gun Owners Association uh, has some great uh, info. Um, I'm going to go to their website right now, see if they have any update. They haven't voted on it yet in the House, but they are um, certainly going to vote on it soon i'm sure uh let's see yeah and by the way um 
satisfied. Conference. Brandon Herrera was out there too, which was great. To see him testify. Uh, Rocky Mountain Gun Owners or Nagger, I'm not sure which, gave him a $5,000 campaign check for his his race in Texas. Uh, he's taken on a guy who's the only Republican to vote with the Biden administration for the um, the what they call that the the most comprehensive gun control passed in 30 years. Uh, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, I think is what it was called. Um, and guys like him are what made it bipartisan. So I really hope that uh, that they knock it out. Um, yeah, so Rocky Mountain Gun Owners doesn't have any update on the assault weapons ban yet, but they haven't voted on it uh in on the whole house whole floor but what's his name uh, i believe cam edwards did a story on it yeah we were reading it and so it should be voted on either this week or next week so um, crazy a proposal to ban the purchase and transfer of so-called assault weapons, HB 24-1292, that's the bill I testified against, also scheduled for debate, was pushed as the chamber juggles its calendar. That may come up later this week. So, um, of marketing saturation and 30 days to close. To learn more on how to get your commercial, residential, or land sold quickly, contact Charlie Gill at 800-521-0111 or visit jjmanning.com. Call Charlie today at 800-521-0111 or go to jjmanning.com. I'm going to see if I can find the actual uh, text of the bill. One of my last stops in New England before leaving was at Perfect Smiles in Nashua, New Hampshire. They are always my first appointment back and my last before I leave. I make them a priority because taking care of your oral health is a priority. By Tim Hernandez is the and even is the uh, representative who was appointed and is a card carrying member you think your mouth is of the or that it would take so many visits that you give up before communist party phone call to even get started are you looking for expertise and experience to help you put yourself and your health first and since your oral health affects your overall well-being do what i did i went to perfect smiles in nashua to be as healthy as i can and to look as good as i can as well make your health a priority call the only dentist i'll go to dr Houghton at perfect smiles in nashua look them up at perfectsmiles.com that's perfect smiles I want to read the amendments. Here we go. Live from the Aviva Trattoria studio. We are back here on the Grace Hurley Show. Grace is off today, but I'm Aaron Chadbourne, and joining us like he does every week on Tuesday is Toby Leary from Cape Gunworks. Toby, thanks for being here. People that have questions, 844 Five hundred forty-two, forty-two. Feel free to call in if you want to talk to Toby. So, Toby, here's a question: If that law passes, which we expect that it might, what are retailers like yourself going to need to do? Like, is there recourse? Do you have to sue the state over the unconstitutional law? Or how's that going to play out? Yeah, it's a great question, and uh, you know, in the bill that was passed in um, the House Judiciary in Colorado last week actually affects 80 to 90 percent of the guns sold in an average gun shop i haven't done the uh deep dive into how much how many guns it affects us here in massachusetts but it certainly affects us uh almost 100 percent of the semi-automatic rifles sold in massachusetts um it, i can think of maybe one or two semi-automatic rifles that might slip through the cracks and not be banned but um, it's very, very few. And uh, so, you know, we, we will be looking at a major business decision. Uh, what do we do? You know, A, do we limp along and sell what we can sell and sue and try to get injunctive relief? Um, that's probably what we would do. Uh, or B, do we just say, you know what, this is completely unconstitutional. 
roll the dice and and just not change anything as a business decision and eventually do the perp walk uh because i'm sure that's what would happen they'd love to uh, nail me to the wall and hang me like a trophy on the wall of you know whatever prosecutor's office gets the nod to to bring the hammer down or c do we just say you know what um we had a good run and fold shop which is them winning so that is the least likely scenario to happen for me uh, i'm not a quitter i don't want to just concede i believe we need to stand and fight where the fight is because um if we don't guess what it it migrates it's like a bad disease it's a cancer they're not going to be happy when maryland and new york and new jersey and massachusetts and california all completely fall and now they can see across the state to New Hampshire, Maine, Vermont, you know, all the free states, they're not going to sit idly by. They're going to take the battle everywhere they possibly can. So we need to stand and fight. It's, it's like with these Trump rulings, right? And take Trump off the ballot. Like right. it happens in one state, someone sees it and a social justice warrior jumps on it, tries to bring it to another state. Yeah. We're talking to Toby Leary from Cape Gunworks as we do every two a Tuesday. 844-500-4242 is the number if you would like to call in. Let's go to Gary in Biddeford, Maine. I love my main callers. Go ahead, Gary. You're on with Toby. Hey, Toby. Uh, how you doing, Aaron? Um, I, well, I, when I was going hunting when I was a teenager, I used a 410 bolt-over action <laughs> gun. And the uh, second day of hunting in my whole life, I shot a deer had a big slug in the chamber, shot it. Uh, do you, and then once my father knew that me and my twin brother liked hunting, he went to Zaya's <laughs> department store, bought us each a, a, a 20 gauge Mossberg. Now, what do you think about that 410 bolt over? Yeah, it's, it's probably a little bit light if you're, hunting deer um but they do make some slugs uh for it and some buckshot for it uh but i would say you'd probably be limited to 20 30 yards uh just based on uh the velocity of those rounds coming out of a uh, out of a bolt action shotgun but it sounds like it got the job done for you gary so uh i have taken youth hunting with the 410 gauge when you know they were 12 13 14 years old i like the 20 gauge a whole lot better Think it's a much better option i i certainly love the bolt action uh 20 gauge slug guns that are on the market today like the savage uh 220 is a is a real popular one in in a bolt action and then i the one i'm probably going to get myself is the benelli m2 which is a rifled slug barrel but it's semi-automatic i'm currently using the 20 gauge thompson center arms uh the encore pro hunter which is no longer made, unfortunately. Um, and I like that because I, I can switch it out to my muzzleloader barrel and also to a, like a 308 barrel if I'm going up north and hunting in a state that allows centerfire rifle. But um, all, the, all those choices, 20 gauge slug guns have really caught fire in the last uh, five, 10 years. And uh, they're very accurate and they pack quite a punch. They have a better ballistic coefficiency than the 12 gauge slugs do and uh they've become kind of the the staple for hunting in massachusetts especially or any other shotgun only states um but up in bitterford maine gary i'd i'd go with a center fire rifle if i were you but uh that's just my own uh opinion so <laughs> good luck with that and i hope you put down the big one this season but toby what if the deer are wearing kevlar vests what do you do with that yeah you know uh that is a concern um, <laughs> so you might need to use the light armor piercing round if they're wearing the, the Kevlar vest. But... Come on, man. <laughs> We're going short on time, but let's take one more call. We'll go to John in Rhode Island. Welcome to the show, John. You're on with Toby Leary. Hey, Toby. Hey, guys. How you doing? A uh, quick question about Rhode Island gun laws. Uh, mass resident with my LTC traveling into Rhode Island. Um, what's legal and how do I go about getting a non-resident license in Rhode Island? Yeah, it used to be pretty easy in some towns. Uh, there were some towns you weren't going to get it, uh, but there was a couple of towns that were known for, um, you know, kind of rubber stamping if you had a mass gun, gun license. 
uh, they would kind of give you the the rubber stamp approval. It wasn't a deep dive where other towns would basically tell you no. I haven't heard of any changes being made since the Bruin case um, where it changed from uh, may issue to shall issue. Uh, so I don't know. Like uh, Rhode Island has historically been a very difficult town to get a uh, or state to get a license to carry in. They, but you didn't need a license to buy a gun there. So you could buy basically whatever gun you wanted. You just couldn't carry it. So um, I don't know if things have changed in a post-Bruin world for non-resident license to carry there. Uh, but I know prior to the Bruin decision, they were very restrictive and there was one or two towns that you could go to. But I, I heard even that kind of stopped. So I wish I had better info for you, John, about the Rhode Island uh, non-resident license to carry, but the best place to start is to just call up a couple of police departments, maybe even the Rhode Island state police and find out, say, I, you know, I travel there often and I'd like to get my license to carry. I'm a licensed gun owner in Massachusetts. And, uh, they'll, they'll tell you what's uh, the best way to, to get through that maze. Cause they are not a gun friendly state, just like Massachusetts, but, um, they do issue the non-resident license to carry unlike New York. So, you have that going for you. Thanks for the call, John. Uh, Toby, remind people if they want to learn more from you, visit the shop, where can they go or where they can they hear more from you? Yeah, great. Thanks so much, Aaron. Uh, so they can get up to date with everything we have going on in our, in our shop with two different radio shows. I have one on Sunday on WXTK called Rapid Fire every Sunday from noon to one. It's a live call-in show. You can listen on the iHeartRadio app. And also we have a podcast that I live stream on Wednesday from four to six called Rapid Fire as well. And if you go to rapidfireradio.us, you can sign up to be alerted whenever we go live. Sometimes we do special breaking news type of additions throughout the week and you, you don't want to miss out on that. But I would say more importantly, like and subscribe to all the social media um, places that you use, whether it's Facebook or YouTube. Although I will say, Facebook, we've been shut down by Zuckerberg since the beginning of the year. So we've kind of been deplatformed on Facebook. We're still limping along on Instagram and YouTube. But um, Rumble, Telegram, Twitter, Twitch, those are all working great for us. So you can follow wherever you consume your social media. And uh, also would love to show you around at Cape Gunworks and Hyannis if you want to stop in the store. Uh, say hello and and maybe throw a few rounds down range we have a, a 20,000 square foot facility with a state-of-the-art indoor range and a, a beautiful pro shop that's fully stocked right now much to my business partner's chagrin so come take some heat off me and uh <laughs> come leave us of some some of this inventory and it'd be much appreciated but uh i'd love to show you around and and uh have you down here at cape gunworks but Thanks for having me on, Aaron. And we're always here for 2A Tuesday, so uh, you can always hear us there as well. Well, great to talk to you, Toby. Appreciate you being here. Grace is off, but we're appreciating that you're here for a great 2A Tuesday here on the Grace Curley Show. I'm Aaron Chadborn, in for Grace Curley. One more segment when we come back. Follow All righty, gang. That's the Grace Curley Show with Adam Aaron Chadborn. Um, Let's real quick round out this discussion about uh, round out this discussion about Colorado. Um, so I'm not going to read the whole article. They have four different bills, one, two, three, four different bills that they are considering right now. Um, so the interesting thing is if you got to watch any of the debate last week in the, in the house judiciary committee, um, out of those four bills, well, I, they only debated this one, but one of the Republican representatives on the house judiciary asked the question multiple times. He said, we've had 12 different gun control bills passed in the last 10 years. And how is this one going to change 
and do, and we still have rampant rise of gun related, firearm related crime on the streets of Colorado. So how is this one going to all of a sudden do what the other 12 have not been able to do? I'll wait for the answer. And, you know, he, he wasn't, they weren't able to answer that question. They said, well, there's no one bill that's going to solve everything, but we have to do, even if it saves one life, it's worth it. Well, the problem with that is there's one and a half to three million people a year that use guns to defend themselves most of the time without firing a shot. What are you going to say to those people when you disarm them and they can't defend their, themselves any longer? You're going to say, well, we're saving at least one life by not allowing you to buy an assault weapon. No, actually, I don't think you are. I think you can have a lot of blood on your hands. So anyway. All right. Enough about Colorado. I love the state. I'm mad at it right now. And uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Orson, I'm not going there. That's why I ignored that comment. Uh, thank you, Billy, for reminding everyone to hit the thumbs up, subscribe. By the way, my social media manager was like, said, yeah, I, I went into the Instagram kind of the back into the settings and the controls and everything. And uh, we are really throttled. Like we can't, we will never be seen or recommended to anyone unless they like and subscribe. So the same goes for Facebook. The same goes for YouTube. So the only way we're going to grow the channel is if you guys share it out and somebody hits the like. So when you share it, encourage people to like and subscribe. Uh, I hate that that I'm even doing this right now because I hate watching other shows that all say, hit the like, hit the subscribe, comment, share, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's tiring. But honestly, that's the only way the show grows. That's the only way this content gets out. So anyway, my trip was epic. As you can see, I'm a little sunburned. It was beautiful weather. It was gorgeous skiing. <laughs> yeah, Grace sounds real rough today. Um, and um, so, uh, you know, I love that state. I hate their politics. And uh, they used to be a very red state. Now they're very blue. It's not even purple anymore. They had a brief stint on the purple and it went straight blue. So anyway, so, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> for those armored up bucks, the black tip ammo, some, I wonder if the green tips would work on the, uh, on the, uh, armored up deer, the, the Kevlar vest wearing bucks. I think that the Fort Scott munitions 62 grain brass bullet would be the way to go because it'll still tumble on impact. It's not just going to punch a hole, but it'll punch right through the Kevlar, tumble through the soft tissue. End of story. You'll find the deer. That's what I'd do. Anyway, all silly talk. But yeah. All right, guys. That is the Grace Curly Show. We had a ball. It was fun. Um, and we will do this tomorrow. Sorry, I missed last week for 2A. Uh, oh, I didn't miss 2A Tuesday except streaming it. I did it over the cell phone because I couldn't get technology to work. Um, oh, I did kind of stream it and held the phone up to the microphone, but that was kind of weird. But rapid fire, we laid an egg on last week because I was in Colorado with my son and uh, I felt like I already tied him up for like 15 hours at the state house on Tuesday. And then Wednesday I was trying to, um, you know, get, spend some time with him. So that's all it came down to was a selfish desire to spend time with my son. I don't think that's very selfish, but Al, as it turns out, we couldn't do rapid fire and, uh, he would have been a good egg if I made him sit through it, but we had more fun doing other stuff. So 
we saw the whole state. We started out in Colorado Springs, ended up in Glenwood Springs, went skiing at Copper Mountain. It was pretty epic. Epic was the word I kept using. Like every time you turn the corner and see the rock, he's like, oh, look at that view. It's epic. It's just amazing. But all right, guys, God bless you. And uh, I will see you tomorrow for sure. My pinky swear, Scout's Honor. And uh, where is that? It? Yeah, that's the Scout's Honor. And uh, so good deal. Good to see everyone today. God bless. We'll see you next time.